boys, what's going on? Boys, girls, uh, in between uh, all genders, specific, non-specific people out there. <laughs> Whatever you are, I don't care as long as you like knives. You gots to like knives. You gots to like puppy and calf. Here's the puppy. Puppy over here. Got this towel. Still got the towel. Got the towel. Ain't got the puppy. Ain't got the puppy. But it is now called, by the way, Puppy Tools Ningbo Company Limited. And Big John, Big Bad John, he is the guy that makes these knives in a very limited quantity, by the way. Oh, you know, now that we got the cloth, what do you think? Let's wipe this blade down. Ooh, did you see? And it says, okay, it says SS. What does that mean? Well, of course, it means super sport. You guys know. No, it, actually, it's his lingo or something like that. It's hand-rubbed M390. I guess that's what that means. Now, um, people, and I'll give you the link to his Instagram I'll give you the link to his website, which will frustrate you and turn you inside out because his website is, you know, totally unnavigable, craziness, whatever. Because it doesn't matter because uh, he comes out with different knives. They're very limited in numbers. And, oh, can you tell I've been carrying this? Oh, crap. Get out of there. Yes. Pocket lint. Now. It's really interesting because his knives are fascinating and I don't have my puppy anymore, but hey, hold on. Oh, crap. I got the Piggy, the Piggy S. Apparently not SS. It's probably M390, but it's definitely not hand rubbed. It's stone wash. But here you go. Big John. Big Bad John. And uh, puppy knives and tools. So this is just weird. And I know probably a lot of you guys either don't know or don't give a shit anyhow. But it's very interesting. And I, somebody called my attention to these. Okay. It may have been Steve Kluver in Iowa or somebody like that. He's into, into, into knives. And so he thought this was fascinating. When they were on eBay, this one was. And then the puppy before that. And so I go, I don't even know what the hell that is. And he says, I don't either, but I, I think I like it. I, I ordered one or I won the bid or whatever it was. And so then I got in line and I got the puppy, which I, I'll put a link to my video on the puppy. Oh, by the way, I got a picture of the puppy somewhere. Yeah, okay. So, see, this is... This is I did a video on, this is my lovely background at the time, but uh, this was what, 96 of 100, Puppy Bowler M6, M390. So this was kind of had a little a nail nick on it and this and that. But I mean, if you look at his Instagram, let me pull a couple of little things. Oh, by the way, the calf here, okay? See, it's got carbon fiber on this side. I didn't know it didn't have an inlay on the other side because I'd never seen the backside when I ordered this. And I paid him through PayPal and he shipped it from China and it got here. And so here's, you know, you can put the, the light on it and you can light that up. And I don't care that it was glow in the dark. In fact, I didn't even know it was glow in the dark until after I ordered it. And I don't care. I still don't care. Uh, so, if you like that, it's trick and all that, I, I get it. Now, next, let me see if I can pull this up. Okay, so on his Instagram, I mean, he shows, I mean, this is the Little Puppy SS, so I don't know, uh, Little Puppy was smaller than the Puppy or something, maybe. And then, check this out. How about that? So, he does, I mean, he goes, I do it on, like, weekends and... When I have time from work and stuff like that, he's got a small shop, limited quantities, but it seems like he does a really good job. And I get my hands on this one um, and it feels to me like a, a pretty good quality, 
really to the point of almost uh, either really high-end manufactured or mid-tech. And, you know, maybe you could argue almost custom, uh, depending on how you want to define custom, you know. Can you use automated machines to make custom knives and, you know, that, that kind of gray line between mid-tech and custom. But, I mean, the hardware seems to work really good on this. And, of course, the, the way the blade is done is really nice. And these are on washers. They're not on bearings, that kind of thing. But there's the drop. Now, it's a front flipper. This one is, and so is the piggy. Oh, by the way, where's here, kitty, kitty, kitty? Where's kitty go? Oh, there's kitty. Okay, so this is, <laughs> shit. There's a story behind this one, too. It doesn't say kitty, does it? Um, and this one, did I get this tested? Yeah, see, there's the Rockwell divot and crap. I guess I'll put it down here because I forgot to pull that information. But I sent this in to get tested because it said S35. And it just came in a... I mean, I wrote on the tin. Just an unmarked tin, you know, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it was because I was bitching and moaning at him. And I didn't know him for jack nothing at the time when I, was, when I had bought this off of eBay. And it was taking forever to ship from China. And I go, dude, I mean, help. And he goes, hey, I'm sorry, you know, I'm not responsible for obviously how the mail moves but so he had put this in there for free and so I got it and then later I looked somewhere on his side or another place and saw that that's what this was was called and I had it tested and yes it's real s35 vn and by the way you know it came with a natural g10 scale and a black titanium uh back frame here but I dyed the scale black because I go what's what's the point in doing that uh you might as well get both ways black so I did okay and it's a pretty good sized knife so this one is obviously an integral but they also made the piggy in a non-integral of course I got the integral because I thought that's just way cool right so, uh, do they really talk much? Let me see. Oh, and by the way, you can see the little Rockwell divot there, too. So, I'll put it. Yes, it's real M390. What's the Rockwell? I can't remember now. And so, I'll put that on the screen as well. But, I mean, I just thought maybe, I mean, if you don't know anything about these things. And this is the one, the box that the, that the piggy S came in and that's been I've had that for well over a year maybe two years okay so we get through all that um, and this has got washers on it I believe this has washers on it too and this one is not easy to front flip it is a big knife this is almost nine inches overall length and almost four inch blade so uh, and it's not bearings and all that stuff. So, yeah, 3.8 something down here, 4 inches. Overall, 8 and 3 quarter at, you know, uh, well over 22 uh, centimeters. So, that's what this is. And this one is right at 3.5 inches, if it's that, for blade. And then it's under 8 overall. See what I'm saying? So this is much smaller and this is interesting. Look at the blade on this one here. Uh, interesting blade shape. Really cool, actually, I think. And if you look at the other on his Instagram, you'll see, you know, here's the blade I got, but there was another blade shape. Okay, so strange. Uh, yeah. Uh, but he just does uh, limited quantities and there's been people on his Instagram saying, how do I buy your damn knife? You know, because it's very frustrating uh, because it, you can't just go on his website, put one in a cart and buy it. Okay. 
and I haven't seen any on eBay in forever. And then I finally went back and forth with him enough times over several years to kind of get the story from him. You know, oh, in 2001, he was in college and took an interest in knives. And then in 08, he made his first self-defense pen and did that. And then in 2010 is when he started doing knives. So that was 11 years ago. Well, this is 2021. So that's what he's been doing, but uh, he does. And, and in 2018, his son was born. So his son was born in the year of the dog. So thus the puppy uh, company name. So that's when he went from mosquito to puppy. Okay, let me do this. Let me see if I can, has this thing even got any juice? See what I'm saying? There's your, there's your light up. That's a little UV, but you can see what that does. Of course, we're under studio lights, which is not going to, not going to retain, uh, the look there, but you can see kind of how, it, how that does that. All right. So for how long, who knows? It depends on how dark it is around here and all that crap. So, um, and I don't care, but I guess it's a trick for some people. And this is a front flipper as well, so you can front flip it, which front flippers are not my thing necessarily. Uh, I mean, I can do it, but uh, this comes with dual thumb studs, so reverse flick is really easy. And it has a hell of a drop considering that it's got uh, washers. And we'll take this one apart, and I also have pictures that I may insert in here of it disassembled uh if i need to that you know that show it as well so it's centered it's nice uh look at the backspacer how long have i gone now and i haven't shown you the backspacer that is it okay Here's the pin, here's the stop. And of course that comes out here with the screw. Okay. And so it's pretty simple setup like that. Uh, no lock rock, no blade play. And here's your lock up. So yeah, but I just thought, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe this video would help you some with kind of understanding the whole deal if you've ever seen the mosquito tactical stuff and just thought what what's the story what's going on here and it, basically he said that his knives are mostly for internal consumption which is in china and or what gets left over goes to either russia and or europe so that's why you're not seeing a lot in the united states uh, which is too bad, really. But I really like, ooh, I like this, except I'm getting the thumbprints on it. But do you like that? that that's really nice uh, surface on that blade. And, well, let me see if I got a little piece of paper over here. Uh, will the blade, will the, will the knife be a knife? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's nice, okay. It got a thumb ramp, jumping, that kind of stuff. Can you tell? Oh, man. It's just a continual scourge with me of, uh, you know, I'm. you can tell, right? Right? Messing with knives. Yeah. Uh, it's just what happens. But really pretty solid. Uh, let me get my magnet over here and see. Well... Crap, uh, I guess this is a steel, let me see. Yeah, there's a steel insert there for that log bar. I'm, I'm not, I don't think that this is steel. I think this is titanium. Um, and I don't know about the hardware. We'll check that when we take it apart. And let me get my paper back out of the way here. Ergos. Uh, ergos are pretty good. I mean, kind of here's your, I, it would have been nice had that 
this choil area been moved a little further forward. I mean, like you got this here. I'm pretty far forward here. This is really very nice with the palm swell and everything and pretty neutral. So this is pretty comfortable with the pig. And then the pup uh, or the calf. I'm sorry, don't have the pup. Calf. Uh, yeah, I mean, nothing to beef about. Did I say that? Uh, but yeah, I, it's it's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, you're back here to start with and then you go back from there. Reverse grip is very comfortable, actually. And uh, you got a little cutaway here. So for sharpening, you're not going to bang up against things uh, with a sharpening stone, hopefully. And yeah, uh, I like that buoy looking blade, I guess is what I'd call it. I need to look at my knife guide again, but yeah. Uh, really, really a great, mm, sim simple maybe design, but uh, pretty attractive overall. And this one struck me as well back in the day. And I wish I had, I wish I had my puppy because I, I've, I've looked around, I can't find that damn thing anymore. It's like, you know, and that's why I never got rid of the piggy is because if I get rid of this, uh, I'll never get another one because I'll never see another one for sale. And it's centered up reasonably good. Um, but yeah, it's not, you know, super easy to flick. It's, woo! Uh, I mean, that's, that's just a lot. And um, of course, how do you put, you know, a hardened steel insert on this without, you know, you, you, you see integrals that when they do have a hardened steel, it's, it's capped right over here because you can't go inside and machine and put one on the inside like you can on normal knives. So, no, this is not done that way, but I'm not, you know, I'm not really getting any lock stick on it. Uh, so that's good. That's good. This one, this has got a steel liner, obviously, so don't have to worry about it there at all. How much does it weigh? Now that we're getting a billion minutes into this whole thing, uh, 4.52 ounces at 128 grams. You take the other one, the pig, that's 170. I mean, that's 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 a hoss of a knife too. It really is. And let's see. Yeah, we're at six ounces there. Yeah, she's all there. That's for sure. But uh, let's check blade stock and handle thickness real quick, and then move on. And 0 0.11. What? 2.7. 2.8. 2.8 millimeter, uh, 12.1, uh, of an inch thick, 0.46, yeah, at 11.7, so, and she's fading too, I'm gonna have to maybe put another battery in her, where's my balance point? There's my balance point on it. That's easy to find. This is pretty easy to disengage as well because you can just right there, you know, and it drops. You might want to stay out of the way a little bit for that blade to swing around there. And of course, you're not getting the drop like you would with bearings, but it's amazing that you get as nice a drop as you do and it probably get better with time. And let me see, come on, let's pull this up. Blade to handle length is fine. And design flow is great too. Of course you got this, but that's because it's front flipper. Otherwise this flows right into the bolster here. All right, let's, uh, let's take this puppy apart. And wow, yeah, this might be one that I might want to come back around and put a little a little thread locker on that later. Okay, there's the under under of this. Okay, take a look in here. It looks like flat spot on the pivot of sorts. And uh, let's take the screws out. I 
I don't know. They just don't seem like the run the same. You know, just a run of the mill type screw. It's this seems pretty high end. The hardware seems really positive on this too. Uh, it's got a good feel to it. Okay, so here we go. Designed by Big John, the calf, 2021. This is on the inside of the lock bar, which is steel. Okay. And I don't know about this. But I guess I can find out pretty damn quick. And the pocket clip doesn't hook up to that, to that liner. So, okay. Let's just push this out. Let's take this. Yeah, there's nothing there. Okay. There's nothing there. So that's obviously titanium. Or at least it's not magnetic. And then, of course, you got these screws under the pocket clip. Okay. So they're securing this steel lock bar. And so kind of the beauty of this is it's not a frame lock. Okay. So you don't have somebody hacking the saw blade right down <sighs> you know what I'm saying because yes that happens right when you when you have a lock bar here you go time to take the uh, the saw and saw away part of your damn frame but here no so I mean I, I see the beauty of of doing this and obviously I've laid this down somewhere where it's already starting to mark it up and thus the saga of titanium and here's the bronze washer and oh this is interesting too oh, okay so here's the little piece and this is titanium obviously as well yeah there's no magnet and magnetism and how about that well okay steel hardware then uh, check this out there's a little interior piece in the blade okay check that huh so and of course that's steel hmm i mean how many have you seen do that and i don't know why but here's the, see here's the inside so it says the cap and it says bowler m390 otherwise there was no marking for the kind of steel and I didn't realize that. And then he said, yeah, it's on the inside uh, on this area of the blade. So when I took it apart, yeah, I saw it then. And here's the pivot and everything's just falling off here, right and left. And so there's really no machined area in here to lay that washer in there or even on here. So the washers, of course, just lay flat right on there. And then, of course, this comes through as, you know, as the stop, okay? And then this one on the back. So those are, they look the same to me, okay? Which is good to make those uniform, I guess, in that regard. But so you've got this that fits in to the blade, which is just really different i think i've seen this before but i can't remember when but also just think the blade can kind of run free then independent of that pivot coming through there because of this i guess um otherwise i'm not sure why you would do it that way but uh okay and then, oh yeah, I guess this goes, this goes on that uh, uh, through this, which is interesting as well. This collar to where that stop is. Hmm. Okay. So that's it. I mean, that's the whole schmo. Uh, just washers, and a blade, and uh, you know the scales. And I, you know, I think he had some lubrication on there, but when I took it apart and put it back together, I didn't put any on there, but I think I will now. And of course, here's your squared off area here. 
and that should match up oh on the downside of this uh you got a ceramic detent ball by the way okay so downside of this kick this in and i'll clean this out a little bit just to get any residual okay and then uh put this in kick it down okay now we're facing it down kind of kind of sorta okay now we want to put this on and i guess we're gonna throw some of this uh i don't need that much actually but okay uh, i can put the blade down and also and that sh that'll go flush here in a bit and then from this side as well i need to put this and this collar here because that's one way to figure out exactly where that blade's got to stop right there built that collar out maybe the diameter was too small or maybe you just wanted that extra collar over there i, I mean i don't know the whole thought process behind that here's your detent ball and track and stuff and then uh you can put this and I probably should have put lube on both sides or at least a drop i don't know but uh i gotta put this because these come from the front so this is gonna be fun keep a keep a finger under each place am i okay is it gonna work only if i get this flat spot lined up correctly and i think i do now come on let's see let's just lock the pivot down for now it's got a positive feel you can't really over tighten that screw it just won't let you i mean it's, when it's there it's there which is a really good positive feeling uh on that let me see if i can stand this up so that we're going to take this in square And I'm thinking the amount of pressure you put on this will affect the blade too, but it kind of just stops. It doesn't really let you go beyond that, which I like. Um, and let's get this put down. I think we got everything except the pocket clip and the pocket clip screw okay so where do we got this yeah we should be so we should be pretty centered yeah okay uh apparently no left hand carry on this because this is just set up for right handers and let's throw it on the let's throw this thing down on the towel let's do this instead oh really okay what do we got um okay okay not much difference in the action than before okay but not bad not bad for washers i imagine they'll get better over time as they get smoothed on and worn in that kind of thing maybe some of the marks on that scale were as a result of the pocket clip huh hmm wonder oh well all right here's the box comes with a card all this you can see for those who stubborn how does he know my wife oh and uh by the way it has one of these in here too so 
you know, I got one with the piggy, I got one with the puppy, and you can, uh, okay, they, they're the same, okay. And also in the box, this came in. So I guess 13 years, I think he said something like that, 13th anniversary, yeah. Of, I mean, 08's when he made his tactical pants, so that's when he started making things, and that's when he started the Mosquito Tactical, so he's 13 years in, all right? And I remember bugging the hell out of him to get this. This was one that he put out, and I saw it on his site, and it wasn't about uh, a knife necessarily. This was just about the uh, COVID thing. Uh, from tactical, those fighting with uh, the COVID, yeah. And so, you know, just a kind of a thank you to healthcare workers fighting COVID because every country in the world was fighting COVID. I don't want to talk about that damn thing. But, I mean, I thought the coin was way cool. You know, it's a big old heavy. And I like this design with the sword and the wings and stuff. I don't know. So I got one from him. But, yes, uh, the the calf and the piggy and the kitty and so it's let me get them all on one platform here and then of course this here so you got kind of a an array of knives and then of course there was that puppy so uh, and I don't know, I mean, he's, if you look at his Instagram, he's got various and sundry, even some uh, fixed blade knives that he's done, all that kind of thing. So, and it looks like he engraves or does the handle specialty, depending on, I guess, if somebody orders a, a, a whole run of them for some occasion or something like that. I can't imagine doing that, especially at the pricing. I mean, this, this was $2.99 here. I don't know what I paid for this. Uh, I'm thinking around 200, something like that. This course was a throw in on this deal, but uh, I'm gonna leave you to it. I, I just, you know, that's what I know about Mosquito Tactical uh, for right now. And I'm gonna keep my eye on them when they come out with new folding knives. I'm gonna try and get one and keep it and go forward with that because I really like what he does. I like his sense of design. Uh, they're really kind of small batch. I consider them to be customs slash, you know, uh, maybe mid-tech type area. And uh, yeah, they're solid. They're interesting. Take care. Thank you so much. You know what we do? We love them knives. We love them I guess animals, puppies, kitties, piggies, whatever. And you guys, stay sharp.